I'm Bree. <laughs> <laughs>
I feel different already because I've done the directing course. I'm, I'm from an acting background and I know that I can sing. I know that I want to sing. I'm just like, but how? How do I do it? How do I go about it? And it's all that thing of what people are going to think and like, oh, how does she think she is? But already it's like, no, I'm doing the lives on the Instagram and just, oh, I don't know. I just feel like I am. I'm, I'm going to be proud. I, sometimes I used to be scared to say yeah. I'm an actress. Whereas right. that I said out loud now and say, yeah, I'm proud of that. You know, so now it's I, like, I can sing. I'm going to do it. I completely relate to everything you're saying because... When I, I find it cringe first, at the same time. It's like, oh. Well, when I got my first real guitar, I used to have to take it to the studio to work with my the band I was starting out with, you know. And I used to feel a fraud because I didn't really feel like I could play guitar that well. In fact, it's all well what I did contribute at the time. But I felt I don't really want to walk down the street because people are going to think I'm a musician and I'm not. But, you know, it takes time. Yeah, yeah. But you've got that identity now. Yeah. And that's I'm an I'm a performing artist, background. yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And be proud so, of it. Talk a bit more about your drama background mm -hmm. then. And did you study drama at, at, at university? Uh, yeah, I did eventually. I didn't really start pursuing it until I was 17 because at my school, if you did anything different, if you like, read a book or you were into drama, you were just classed as a geek. Yeah. That was just constantly just get. And if, I didn't dare tell anybody that I liked Bon Jovi, but they found out because in my French class, it was like, whatever it was. And then I had to write Bon Jovi. It's like, the sentence was, my favourite singer was. And she's like, you do like Bon Jovi! <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> only when I, le like, I left home, ended up living in Basingstoke, and I popped up to, to where my hometown and I bumped into a French friend. Guess what? I'm studying at college. At Drama, I was like, oh, God, you can... And so that made me realise, God, you can't actually go and study drama. From that point, I went and, I went and signed up. Brilliant. So from 17 Brilliant. up to my... I'm going to be 43 in January. From that point, I didn't stop pursuing it. Um, so I went and did my uh, equivalent GCSEs. I didn't do my GCSEs at school. And, right, then, yeah. and then I did my A-level yeah, yeah. drama. Yeah, yeah. Then I, got, I couldn't believe I'm going to university. I was living in I was living in Runcon at the time. I went to Halton College in Runcon, which is not my where I was where I was brought up. So I was just being a little gypsy moving around. So I just found myself doing A levels in a random little town. <laughs> and then it's like, I'm gonna to apply to university and I, and I got in, I couldn't believe it. Like for, I'm from a deprived background, a really deprived background in, in Hull. Yeah. Um and a and a state cop brand's home. Um and it gets bad press and it's like, well, there was just nothing there. There was just really nothing there for us to grow up and nobody had any aspirations, nothing at all. Yeah, yeah. You didn't discuss going to college when you was at school. You didn't discuss having a decent job. You just would go and work in the local factory. Yeah, yeah. And just within that first year of being off school, I thought, I've got no other choice other than to apply to be a waitress yeah. or in this factory. Yeah, yeah. And then when I bumped into my friend and she was at college, I was like, that was it. I had a goal and I went... Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it's always about the people you meet. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And your peers, and if they're the wrong type of peer, then you need to find another peer group, don't you? I found myself in Liverpool just by the off chance again. Didn't, I didn't plan to leave Hull, never mind hair wrapping in Blackpool and then met someone in Warrington ended up in Witness ended up in Runcorn <laughs> ended up in, in Liverpool and then when you got here like what I, what made me stay because of how vibrant the place was and everyone just seemed to have drive and ambition and aspirations they all wanted to be not necessarily the Beatles but like if they can make it That's in whatever we want to pursue we, we clearly can because they're just ordinary people from Liverpool and I liked that even in Witness and Runcorn people had that vibe as well because yeah. it's obviously the overspill from, from Liverpool yeah yeah and that just captured me here, and it's like, yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm like, because right in Hull we didn't have that. You, if you if you talked about your dreams and your aspirations, you were a geek. Yeah. Not that, that's not the generation now. Everyone's changed, and everyone's at college yeah. and going to university. But yeah. I was but one of the then, first so. in my generation yeah. to go to university. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. yeah. So so what did that lead to? Uh, your your mm, degree teaching career, in drama, <laughs> a teaching career. Yeah. Of course, drama is a massive part of yeah. teaching, isn't it? That was my dream to be an actress and an English and drama teacher. Yeah, yeah. And then I finished my degree. I went. I wanted to do my masters, at, but I wanted to go to a formal drama school. Yeah. So I applied to the the London ones. I went to Central, and I wanted to do a masters in screen acting. Yeah. And so as I walked in, you do your workshops throughout the day. You do your Shakespeare piece. You do your modern piece, and you have your little. And then you're walking into the interview, and as soon as I walked in the door, the guy was like, You'll, "Just before you even sit down, you're never going to work in film." I can tell. I was like. Right then. Yeah, and then he then he contradicted himself throughout the whole interview, saying, "Well, you want to be an actress, but you know you, you need to be aware that you're not going to always be working unless you're really lucky. You need some sort of backup." And I was like, "Well, I am going to. I'm I'm a trained teacher as well." And he's like, "Well, you can't do both." And I was like, "What do you mean? You just told me I need a backup job to help me pay for what you know the times that I'm not working. So I've got my little backup thing." He just contradicted me, so that kind of lost my confidence as well. I was like, "God, this is really hard doors to break down." So all the all the while that I've chased this, even though the fire roars inside, I've just been met by iron doors. Yeah, I, yeah, you have a little yeah. breakthrough, then another iron door, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm saying iron door, and I'm emphasizing it like that. Like, yeah. Fucking hell. It's, well, it's really, really <laughs> expressive though. It it's hard to get in. Picture, yeah. And but you've you've then you've you've graduated through life to coming back to Liverpool 
And all of a sudden, you've found a door that's you've pushed it and it's opened. Yeah, it's How does yeah. That feel right now. It's so refreshing. Okay, yeah. And it's so honestly, and it's only at the small stages. Nothing much is happening, but it's like this. I'm connecting with people that I, I, I said to you before. I was like, I feel like I'm right where I'm meant to be right now. Absolutely. There's a reason why I'm in the big condo. Yeah. There's Absolutely. a reason I've, I've just stumbled across it because I was pursuing a theatrical thing to, I to find a director from the other pursuits that I'm doing. And because there's a singer in me and you're bringing the singer out in me That's and it's right. amazing. It's only That's like the fourth right. week. It's like, oh, I'm daring to say, God, I can sing, I'm doing it. Yeah. And they're going to have us writing our own original music again. Didn't, didn't ever expect any of that on the course. And we're going to leave with our own original material and, right. and doing a performance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's exciting times, isn't it? Yeah, it is exciting times. But you've yeah. also you've also appeared in some productions, I believe, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've been in... Um, stage and... Yeah, of. I've done, like, theatre productions. Um, I've done a Marilyn Monroe musical in the past. Um, I, which is, Kerry Cotona was in that cast, and I ended up being her understudy. And um, that was a bit of a, a farce. But it, w it was still a, a, an enjoyable uh, experience at the time. Right, I, yeah. I, ended up, I ended up coaching these people on, on, on set, and it's like... And, um, one of the women from Books Fizz, one of the singers from Books Fizz, she was in it, and she just yeah. kept saying, you, "That should have been your role." Just giving it to her because she's the right, name. Right. But um, so again, I was I was kind of breaking, and then being pushed back right. every time. I kept getting these opportunities and getting pushed back. But the whole while, um, so I moved to London to try and be a little bit closer to that in, um, industry, yeah. Yeah. and I just went to every class I could go to, M Meisner and. Um, just feel like film classes. Just to, uh, just absorbed as much knowledge as I possibly could. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was mostly pursuing an acting career and yes. never even daring to say I can sing. Even though then I used to sing in the like I was a shower singer, singing in the bathroom all the time, and you found your voice with the acoustic singing in the bathroom. What about the Marilyn Monroe production? Did you do any singing in that? Well, yeah, that was what it was yeah, for, and yeah, we, so yeah. that that was singing again. The woman from Books Fizz, it was yeah, her song I'm that sure. she wrote this song, and she was yeah. like, "Wow, you'd be perfect for this." <laughs> so it was giving me a real taste. And it's like, oh, and and do you know what? To, actually, um, when I went to audition for the for the. For the musical, I sang somewhere over the rainbow. Um, oh, what's the version of it was? It wasn't the one that was in the in the Not film. Not Judy Garland, but that, that yeah yeah that, that uh, American singer. Yes, so I did her version. Yeah, yeah, and that got me to the I second know. round, yeah, yeah. and and then to get the actual to be cast in the role what they did they gave us some lyrics to a song they didn't give us the tune they didn't give us the backing track they just gave us the lyrics and we all had to go away and and turn it into a song. Wow. And it was like, oh my god! I was petrified, didn't know what the hell to do. Yeah, of course. But I, I, I created some sort of tune to it, and you know, and right. then I presented that, and then I got, then I got the role. And then until they said, oh, well, Kerry Cotton is going to come in, and you're going to share the role with her. Um, but it was a hard process, but it made me realize, oh. But again, it was just finding, finding my feet, that I'm believing in myself, that I, I'm, a, I'm a performing artist, I'm an actress, I'm a singer. I, did, I wasn't coming from a place of ego. I'm quite humble. I keep my feet on the ground. So I find it hard to be like, yeah, I can sing as well. I'm, I'm not one of them. It's like, but I can. It's like, I'm sick of holding back. I'm tired of holding back. So to, to have found this course, I've kind of stumbled across it, but it's, I'm meant to be, be where I am right now. It's, yeah. it's going to bring that out in me. Fantastic. Yeah, so there's lots to come. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. No, it really is. And um, you obviously only, you're, by the sound of it, not many people have heard you singing voice, but... How would what would who would you liken it to in terms of style? Um, that sort of that delivery that I'm, you have. I'm mainly influenced by like I don't sing like these people in the slightest, but my influence comes from the likes of um, like Janis Joplin, sure. and The Doors, and Led Zeppelin, all like the big wigs. It's like uh, as if, but they're, they're, that's just where the fire comes from. Yeah, that yeah. scene is from that kind of like powerhouse. Like you say that it's, I can't like it's that. I just love my, Janis Joplin's voice. It's just amazing. So yeah. I love that. Yeah. I really love that. But every time I sing, oh. It, People always say, oh, you sound maybe country and western. Oh, right. Every single time I sing, people like to say, you've got that kind of country, kind of Dolly Parton. Can you sing any Dolly Parton? I was like, well, I've kind of adapted um, well, you've got Jolene. Well, you background in country music. But my dad's, That's right. my dad's a country and western <laughs> singer. Right, so it's yeah. like, That's well, right. although normally <laughs> when kids, when you hear a kid's background, it's like the parent was a, an artist. They got they followed the chords, what the dad was playing, and they end up getting that influence. <laughs> we didn't have that. I, I watched him, and I was inspired, and I was intrigued, but it never led to us creating anything at that point and when we were youngsters. You did not have a passion there for no. country music particularly. Not necessarily, I, I no. I hated country music no. when I was growing up. I thought it was awful, yeah. but that's something that came to me. Yeah. You know, an appreciation. But when I do sing, but even, if, even if I sing Janis Joplin, I say, oh, you've got a very kind of country voice. That's interesting. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's a bit of a Sheryl Crow, maybe a bit of a Yeah, maybe. Yeah, nice I like singing um, Alanis Morissette songs. They, yeah. they, I yeah. seem to have that kind of yeah. tone. I yeah. can sing in my own, uh, uh, Janis Joplin. Oh, oh, Alanis Morissette. Yeah. That one, not all of her songs, but I can... Yeah. I can 
that kind of yeah, tone. Rocky yeah, kind yeah, of. yeah, yeah. And then over the years, obviously, because I, I didn't think I could sing when I was younger, so it's a muscle that I've just developed over and over the years, yeah, it, it, and I've managed to kind of get to a, a bit of a range, yeah. and I can even Have you had can, some vocal coaching. Mm, not, not loads, little bits. Yeah. Um, Little bit, obviously, through, when you're doing drama and you're doing the Alexander technique and oh, sure. all, the, all the breathing, it's, I've probably found more of a, a lung capacity doing all the breath work at the meditation sessions. Fabulous. Yeah, like that, that's probably really helped. And just. You found the spiritual root, root the spiritual path. It, just, just touch a little bit on that for, the, for people that are watching you. Um, I was a little bit lost and I just kind of stumbled across a healing community um, yeah. here, here in Merseyside, which involved a lot of breath work, meditation, yoga. Um, plant medicine on on a, on a on a kind of I want to say professional level, but like on a, on a level with the practitioners that it was done. So you're a consumer, would you say, rather than a practitioner? Or have you oh done yeah, that yeah. As well? No, no, definitely don't practice. Right, yeah, right, no, okay. not a practice. Okay. I'm not a space holder. I don't hold space. Sure. But I would love to. People people say to me, "Oh, you're a natural healer," and yeah. I'd love to do a Reiki course. Honestly, that's one I'm gonna love crystals. I just like love me crystals, and, yeah. and I just believe in um, like manifestation and spirituality. Yeah. That's my yeah. thing, and I'm so glad I found that in my life because it really works. The breath work is it's like medicine. Wow. It's like it really taps into our chemicals in our brain. You say and tap, have you done any EFT at all? No, 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 but we've that done... That is amazing. Uh, if ever you get a chance when you're stressed, if just, do just the tap and tap work, yeah, yeah. No, I've, I've, heard, I've heard about it. Um, but at my my the favourite one that I like is the conscious connected breath work. So you're doing a specific breath for about 20, 30 minutes, not like what, where we're breathing now. It could be... For 20 minutes, like yeah. non-stop. Yeah. And that... It, the, the, the energy flow that you ignite in your body is just beautiful oh, amazing, and it just yeah. release and then you usually the practitioners get you to tense at the very end and then scream it all out and you just your body you, you kind of it's like you it's like you tripping but it's not it's just through your own <laughs> but it naturally it's like beautiful it creates this kind of it's very transcendental and it's just through through breath yeah and that is well the been, reason i brought you onto that subject really is because we talked to, obviously beforehand and you've talked a little bit about your trepidation and your nerves about performing as yeah. a singer, obviously you're a, you're a seasoned performer as a, as a, 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 in, in drama terms, as an actor, but you've got all the tools you need there. First of all, you've got your acting experience, mm -hmm. which is crucial, I think, if you're going to sing a song yeah, and mean yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It's not your own creation. And but express the story within the song. A different, different ball game, but mm. you've got to believe what you. What well, I think that's sing. how I perform songs because of my acting background. That's you can right. tell whether it's the Janis Joplin one or Jeff Buckley or Hallelujah, yeah. I'm listening to the words and if I, I feel it. like at that point I would be crying, I kind of, yeah. it sounds like I'm crying when I'm like letting the song out. Absolutely. I really let the, the emotion come out. But you've also been studying some other techniques there which you can absolutely employ in the process of calming, mm -hmm. managing, yeah, yeah. Your, yeah, managing your, your emotion, nerves. Yeah. Yeah, and so I feel like I've managed it all. Then I come in and whack a cup of tea straight over, didn't I? Like, <laughs> that's right. that was hilarious. I just threw straight away. That's nerves. That's yeah, just yeah, nerves, yeah. that is. That's always the way it works. Yeah. So uh, just talk a little bit more about Marilyn because you've done a lot of work as Marilyn. Well, and that's fascinating. Yeah, I'll kind of just. My friend was watching a, a, the movie. I was like, oh, do I have to watch a Marilyn Monroe film? Yeah. Watched it, was blown, Under absolutely duress. blown away. Yeah. yeah um, <laughs> Didn't realise how, how amazing she was and was just hooked from that point. Yeah. This was like when I was Which about 20. Which one was that? Was that Gentleman Before Blonde? No, no, this was um, Some, Some Like It Hot. Yeah, yeah. Mine, yeah, That was it. Well, it blew me away. So she gave me the book to read and that was it. I went on that journey. So she was already my idol. Like, and then five years later, then I, I get in the blonde hair, but it was really long. You look like Marilyn. Why do you go to Marilyn tribute thing? And I just did and I kind of, I applied on the Wednesday, was jobbing out as a Marilyn <laughs> tribute on the Saturday. So it kind of just worked and it's just the fascination has just kind of like grown from the, there. Did you have to put the American voice on and yeah yeah, yeah and yeah, then yeah. i used to wear a wig and then but all the other uh marilyn tributes they all have their hair cut short so it's like do you know what if, if i'm going to be doing it properly i've got to cut my hair short so i hacked away at my hair and cut it short and oh, yeah. yeah but it, for some reason there's a seed that's been planted and there's a story that i've got to tell with the, the marilyn thing and my friends are like come on well you know times are ticking you in your 40s it's like well, this story needs to come out yeah the, from the little we've discussed beforehand before we came on camera i think i totally agree with you there's something Pushing yeah, so I've direction. written a script, but I've, I wrote it in a cabaret style, and oh, that's how I was initially going to present it as cabaret. Yeah, yeah. I'm waltzing around the audience and flirting with the men sitting on the knees. So I've done all that, and I made a load of mistakes. My mouth went dry. I had to grab, grab a fella's pint of beer, and I was like, my, my mouth's gone dry. But what an experience! But if there's something there, I've got to tell this story, and I've just got to get it yeah. out. So I've found a director; she's going to help me 
put that out at some point. And maybe it could be a song, who knows? Yeah, yeah. Maybe and write a song about her life. Yeah, and when it Karen, when it came to working not, on the Marilyn... It isn't Karen, Candle in the Flipping Wind. No, yeah, yeah, no. But yeah. But so, just, yeah. Just, just working on the Marilyn thing, then obviously she sings, so I thought, well, let me see if I can try and sing in some of her songs. So that's taken me a while to find her voice because yes. it kept coming out American or it kept coming out um, country and western. Right. So again, practising, 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 flexing that muscle, I can now get to the kind of low... The yeah. raspy tones that she that she does that's taken a little while. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. Well, so I can't wait joy. to present that. This whole yeah. life sounds like an absolute <laughs> joy. Well, if you had met me a couple of years ago during the pandemic, my life was upside down. Honestly, so this feels so refreshing that Brilliant. you present, you offer these courses and opportunities because you're all seasoned professionals. You know, sure. you, all amazing backgrounds, all credible, yeah, yeah. and it's f you've given this course for free. Well, yeah, and and, and that's you're giving back. It, that's because of Eleanor Rathbone. Want to promote the opportunities for the, the, the women of Liverpool. Uh, that's their whole uh, raison d'etre. That's why they do what they do. And um, we, we built the case to them. Uh, they do that across the board, obviously, across living conditions, across all sorts of different areas of life. But we built the case to them that, that there's such a, a massive underrepresentation of females in, in the media generally across the, the mm -hmm, world, mm -hmm, yeah. but in the music scene especially. And, mm -hmm. And that's represented by, or, or, or great, the greatest example of that is, is last year's Brit Awards, where um, of, of all the, the awards that were, were nominated, no women were nominated as best artists, which is wow. absolutely yeah. outrageous. Yeah. So that prompted us really to try and, and this whole year for Big Condo has been about, about representing women in, in, in media. Mm -hmm. So... So that's what it's all about. Yeah, thank you for doing so because it. it's, it's given me an opportunity because well, to find a new feet after the pandemic and yeah, there's yeah. nothing going on and I'm in a city that I don't know, I've got no contacts. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I feel like things have just opened up. Yeah, that's right. And it's so refreshing and everyone's so humble and down to earth and that's the environment I like to be in because yeah. people can get a bit of a bit of head and above themselves and I don't like that. You've manifested that for yourself. Yes, you indeed. Yes, yeah, I have, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. It's about taking yourself out of that comfort zone and... Yeah. Offering your spare time, like I could be at home sitting up on the sofa now, but this is just absolutely, so, absolutely. yeah, so, well so interesting, you. yeah. Well done, you. Yeah. And it's been an absolute blast meeting you. So, <laughs> <laughs> move on. I always say to you, I'm quite shy, and you're like, you don't shut up talking. <laughs> <laughs> I am quite shy, though. I'm usually sitting at home, quite, quite keep myself to myself. <laughs> There's something that's got to come out. So, so yeah. what's coming up for you is the next big thing. First of all, before we go into that, Give us your socials, please, so we let people know how to get hold. So my yeah. Instagram, and I don't really use TikTok a lot, but I've I've got a profile on there, so I need to start adding more to that. So it's sure. Haley Jane with a yeah. Y. I keep yeah. saying 1981. Yeah, good. Haley Jane 1981. Awesome. And in March, March the 21st or the 22nd, it is. I'm going to be a part of a production. Um, it's a lady called Bev Clark. She runs a production company called Bus Stop Productions. Right. She's very well known for community theatre in the Merseyside, and we're performing Regina monologues. Yeah, when yeah. You, when you started talking about that to me beforehand. I did mishear that. Yeah, so everyone I thinks vagina monologues. Yeah, <laughs> but this is a vagina monologue. It's a one-act play, and the six characters are were all married to Henry VIII at one time. So it's the um, divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. Right, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, but it's set in kind of modern times. Yeah. And again, for the networking thing, it's the, the one thing I've never didn't, I didn't have to audition. Normally, you have to apply for things. You see the brief. Um, like I said to you, I was. Thought, right, you know, I want to get back into the game. I've got my Marilyn script there. I want to put that, turn that into production. I was looking for choreographers, yeah. found the networking group, and I just put myself out there saying I'm, a, I'm an actress available. And then Bev Clark messaged me privately. She said, I've got a role for you. And it's the last one I need to fill. Would you like to be the surviving thing? I said, she just said, send me a show reel. So I sent her my show reel. She said, yeah, yeah, can you come for the read You're next Catherine week? Farley. And yeah, and it was like, out of the blue, it just came. I literally <laughs> fell to my knees. I was like, universe. That's kind of, Do you know when you're just kind of like losing yourself a little bit you're like, and, you're, and you're lost? It just came at the right moment when I was tr trying to find myself. It's like, oh, yes. oh, the bro didn't even have to Fabulous. go to audition. And it's Fabulous. like, wow. So you're working on that now? Or is that so, yeah, so we're, we're learning our lines currently. And then because it, yeah, it's been yeah. mad with Christmas, and now when rehearsal will start properly, uh, where's January, it, where, February, where's March. Um, live, um, Hope Street Theatre in okay, March, yeah, yeah cool. 20, 22nd on the 21st. Oh, so Hope and then, playing a bit, of a bit of a significant role. Yeah, because the your, end of this course, yeah, we'll be performing in the Arts Bar at Hope Street Theatre, yeah. That's right, yeah. That's going to be great, isn't it? And the Regina Monologues is doing actually a mini a mini tour, so we'll get to perform it oh, about five or seven times fabulous. in the Floral Pavilion, and then it's in a little mini co um, national comp competition as well. Amazing. So I can't wait for that, yeah. And I'll be putting my little Marilyn <laughs> script together, and then we'll be do doing this. So it's all kind of 
from nothing, Fabulous. then come back to Liverpool where all the creative arts happening. Well, you and, do know yeah, if it's giving us an you're, opportunity. You're doing this. It's you that's creating these opportunities for yourself. Yes, of course, it's all part of a team, isn't it? You know, we're all a team around yeah. you, and, and we're here to support you and that. But mm-hmm. you're, you're creating this reality, and just keep on keeping on. Yeah. You're on the right track. You Indeed. are in alignment. So that's the yes. Line. It feels like it for a change. Yeah, without yeah. A doubt, it's you been are. a while. Yeah. Without a doubt, you are. Mm. So well done, you. Feels great to be here. Thank you so much. <laughs> how, how you enjoyed the podcast? Experience. Yeah, I was obviously like a bit nervous when I came in, and you and you're like probably didn't shut up, shut. And normally I'm sitting quite quiet, so it's like I don't get out quite a lot. So when I do get chatting, I've got I've got a bit it to all say. Comes out. <laughs> <laughs> but it is honestly it's just the it's just the opportunity to refresh. I've never done a podcast before. Well, you have never. Yeah, and yeah. You got so. Put, put and so as I was sitting show, here before, I was like, God, can you imagine if he was on TV and this is like it'd feel like this. I kind of went into that energy like, <laughs> then didn't, didn't didn't shut up. <laughs> well done. Yeah, lovely. Great job. Thank you so much. So I'm going to sign off. I'm going to do my outro now. So mm-hmm. great yep. to meet you yep. again and all that. And we'll do a bit more talking after the end of this, of this, this show. Of this yeah. So it's been a great show. I've really enjoyed meeting Holly Jane. And um, this has been me, Phil Beale, on the Liverpool Community Podcast. And uh, if you like what you're hearing and seeing, then please hit the bell, like and subscribe, drop, some, drop, drop us some messages and some... Uh, some feedback and uh, we'll see you again on the next one so for now it's over and out